This video demonstrates how to use the Avanos CoreFlow Safety Pull and Push Peg. The CoreFlow Peg is intended for the delivery of enteral nutrition, water, and medications into the stomach and to allow gastric decompression or drainage. The benefits of the CoreFlow Peg are the polyurethane design enables a larger inner diameter and makes the tube more robust and resistant to deterioration than silicone. The unique polyurethane foam bumper is traction removable and designed to collapse during insertion and removal. And the external fixation device holds the tube securely at a right angle without kinking. Prep and sedate the patient for an endoscopic procedure. Insufflate the stomach with air and transilluminate the abdominal wall. Select the gastrostomy site. Prep and drape the skin at the selected insertion site. Locally anesthetize the insertion site. Following local anesthesia, make approximately a one centimeter incision through the skin with the safety scalpel. Note, to activate the safety scalpel blade, place your thumb on the slider of the safety scalpel and push forward until the blade locks into place. To retract the blade, place your thumb on the slider of the safety scalpel and depress the blade will automatically slide back into the retracted position. The blade does not permanently lock out and may be reactivated as desired. Insert the introducer safety needle system through the incision, advancing through the peritoneum and the stomach wall. When the introducer safety needle is observed in the stomach, insert the retrieval snare into the endoscope and push the retrieval snare through the endoscope until observed in the stomach. Place the looped placement wire through the introducer needle into the stomach. Grasp the looped placement wire with the retrieval snare. Withdraw the retrieval snare into the endoscope channel. Remove the endoscope and the looped placement wire through the oropharynx. Pull approximately 5 inches or 13 centimeters of the looped placement wire from the mouth. Interlock the loops of the peg tube and the placement wire as shown. Lubricate the peg tube. Apply gentle, steady traction to the abdominal end of the placement wire while guiding the peg tube into the patient's mouth. Continue traction until the end of the peg tube is pulled through the abdomen. Continue pulling the peg tube through the abdominal wall until the 15 centimeter mark on the tube is visible. Cut the placement wire to remove it from the wire loop on the tube. Slide the tube fixation device base and then the tube fixation cover over the entire tube. The base portion goes first. Cut the peg tube to the length desired, at least two inches below the dilator portion. Close the Y adapter caps. Untwist the skirt from the Y adapter. Put the peg tube through the narrow end of the skirt. Note, the use of the skirt is vital. It occludes the air lumen, which prevents air from escaping the internal retention bumper to minimize inadvertent removal of the peg tube. Push the peg tube onto the barbed end of the Y adapter. Important, push over the barb until the tube stop is reached. Twist and push the skirt on until the skirt stop is reached. Slide the base of the tube fixation device down the tube, flat surface first, to the abdominal wall. Under endoscopic visualization, position the internal bumper loosely against the gastric mucosa. There should be no blanching of the gastric mucosa. Secure the tube in the groove of the tube fixation device base and slide the tube fixation device cover pointed in first down the tube to engage with the base until a click is heard to lock the cover in place. Allow approximately 1 centimeter or 10 millimeters of movement between the base and the abdominal skin. Following gastric decompression, the tube fixation device should not indent the skin. If it does, adjust as necessary. Apply povidone iodine ointment to the exit site. No dressing is necessary. Note, an optional silicone T-bar with retention sleeve is included. This T-bar is provided as an alternative to the tube fixation device. Warning, excessive traction may cause premature removal. Use of the peg tube may commence four hours after insertion, usually starting with sterile water. Procedural steps for the push technique are the same as the pull technique until the guide wire is being pulled from the mouth. 
At this point, complete the following steps. Ensure the guide wire is viable at both entry and exit points. Straighten the tapered dilator portion of the tube prior to sliding it over the guide wire. Lubricate the peg tube and the tapered dilator. Advance the dilator tip over the guide wire. Firm tension must be applied to both ends, entry and exit, of the guide wire as the tube passes into the oral pharynx. With the guide wire under tension, the dilator tip will meet the needle and push it through the anterior abdominal wall. After the dilator portion exits the abdominal wall, remove the guide wire. Note, the guide wire may remain in place if desired for reintroduction of the endoscope over the wire. The wire must be removed before the tube is cut. Continue by pulling the peg tube through the abdominal wall until the 15 centimeter mark on the tube is visible. Procedural steps to secure the peg are the same as the pull technique referenced earlier. When the physician determines that the tract is formed, usually within four to six weeks after placement of the peg, the core flow peg tube may be replaced with an alternative feeding device. We recommend using one of the following, the Mickey Low Profile Gastrostomy Tube or the Mick Gastrostomy Tube. The feeding tube may be removed without endoscopy if the peg is free moving in the tract. Sedate the patient if required. Remove the tube fixation device cover from the base and slide both away from the abdomen. Cut the tube below the Y adapter to open the air lumen. Note, if a jejunal tube is in place, remove it prior to cutting the peg tube. Do not clamp the peg tube during removal as this will prevent internal bumper compression. Lubricate the peg tube and skin around the stoma. Rotate and advance the tube several centimeters into the stomach in order to disengage the tube from the stoma and lubricate the tract. Support the abdomen around the stoma with your hand and apply gentle downward pressure to the abdomen. Pull the peg tube until it exits the stoma in a firm single motion. If the tube cannot be removed with a reasonable amount of traction, it should be removed by endoscopic retrieval. Warning. If the tube is not free-moving within the stoma tract, do not attempt to use traction as a method of removal. The conical bumper is featured, but a ring bumper is available. The end-fit peg is featured, but a non-end-fit peg is available. For additional information on core flow peg, reference the IFU. For additional information on core flow peg J placement and tube care, reference the IFU or in-service video.